In this lesson, we're going to learn to create and use structured data types in Java. Many languages provide the ability to create user-defined types. These might be called structures, or structs, or records, or other names. In an object-oriented language such as Java, the use of simple structures is discouraged. There's a better idea called classes and objects that we will learn. But understanding structures is a foundation of understanding objects, and the syntax of structured types uses the syntax of classes, so we're actually just taking a first important step on a journey. Think about a program that will look at packages on a supermarket shelf. Each type of product, each item if you like, has a name, a price, and a particular quantity of product in the package. Let's create a simple structured type to describe this. We'll start by creating a project. So I'm going to come over here and click on the New Project button. It's going to be a Java application. And I'm going to call this Structures1. The main program file, Structures1.java, is actually not where we're going to define this structured data type. We'll write a program in here that will use our structured data type, but we're going to define it in a separate source file. So to do that, we're going to come across to the Project Explorer window over here, and you'll see there's our Structures 1 project. It has source packages, the Structures 1 uh, package, as it's called. Uh, you can see the little brown paper parcel that describes a package. And then Structures1.java there is this source file, what we want to do is to right click on the Structures 1 package and say New Java Class. We're going to call this Java Class Item. And then we'll say Finish. What NetBeans has done for us is to create this skeleton of an empty structure. You'll notice it says Public Class Item. Remember we mentioned that class is an idea that encapsulates the idea of a structured data type, but with extras. And that's why this is actually called a class, even though we're only looking at it as a structured data type. The name given to our type is item, and the fact that it's public is something that uh, we're not going to discuss in this lesson, but means that it's essentially accessible from anywhere. What we want to do is to define the contents of an item as containing the three elements a name, a price, and a quantity. We're going to use Java's data type string, which represents sequences of characters to represent the name. Then we'll use an int type for the price and also an int type for the quantity. Programmers generally will use integer types for money where possible, so this is obviously in cents rather than in dollars. And the quantity may be whatever units we think are appropriate, perhaps ounces or sheets of paper or whatever. That is actually sufficient to define a basic structured data type. Every time we create an item, it will have these three parts, name, price, and quantity. So let's look at how we'd use it. To do that, we're going to go across and click on here, select the Structures1 file, which is going to be our main program. I'm going to delete the comment. And then the first thing that we have to do to use one of these structured data types is to declare a variable of that type. Like any variable declaration in Java, we start with the name of the type, and then we specify the name of the variable. So in this case, we can say item and item. Now, interestingly, Java does not create the storage for the item when we say this. What it's actually done is to create a single variable that will refer to or point at an actual item. So the next thing we have to do is actually create the storage and make an item point at it. The way we do that is using a special keyword in Java, new. So here by saying Item and item, we've created a variable that will point at an item. And then by saying new item, we've actually created the storage. So there we have the declaration and creation, or as it's sometimes called, instantiation of an actual item. Now that we have the storage in memory, we can start to use it. Because we have a name, a price, and a quantity, 
we'll actually want to set those values to contain something meaningful. And the way we refer to the elements within one of these structured data types is by using this dot operator. So an item points at the whole item. An item dot name says go and find the name piece of an item. So we can use this an item dot name equals frosty crunches to specify that the name of this particular item will be frosty crunches. And then we can set its price to 250 cents, two dollars and fifty cents, and its quantity to 28 perhaps ounces. So now we're using the storage to describe one item. Well, to be useful, of course, we probably don't just want to describe a single item. We probably want to describe more than one item. We can do that essentially just by repeating what we've already done. So here we have another variable declaration, item, another item. So that's another pointer that will point to another item. And then we create the storage in memory for it, new item, and then we set the name, the price, and the quantity of another item to generic cereal at $5, but the package is twice as big at 56 ounces. Of course, we don't just want to be able to store things in this, we want to be able to get at those values as well. We can actually use the same syntax with the dots to look at the values that are stored there as well as to write things into them. So here we can say, let's print out an item's name, concatenate comes in, and then concatenate an item's quantity, unit packages, and costs, and then say what the price of that item actually is. And of course, since we have two of them, we can do that with both of them. So here we print out the details of another item. Let's save that file and run it. And you'll see Frosty Crunches comes in 28 unit packages, we know they're ounces, and costs 250 per package, and we know those are cents. Generic Cereal is in 56 unit packages and costs 500 per package. Well, of course, if we have multiple items, we probably don't want to have to print them all out individually. So what we could do is actually to create a method that will do the printout for any given item. Let's see what that would look like. Methods, of course, need to be placed outside of other methods. So we'll come up to this top piece here, inside the class, but outside the main method. And then we will declare a new method, and this one is going to be called display an item. It takes as its argument an item, which will be the item to be displayed. And then you'll see that the body of it is identical to what we just had. It just prints out an item's name, some text, an item's quantity, some more text, and then an item's price. In this case, the return type of this method is described as void. That's to say, it doesn't compute anything that it has to give back to the caller. And void is the way we would specify that. So now we want to comment out these lines because we're going to replace this behavior by calling that method. So if we select those lines by clicking and dragging, come up to source and then find toggle comment, you'll see that it puts the double forward slashes in front of each of those lines and these lines have now been commented out. We can prove that if we save the file and run it, you'll see that we get no output, so we have successfully taken that away. So now what we need to do is instead to call that method we just created twice. And so we'll say display an item and give it an item and then display an item, same method, another item. And if we run that, you'll see that we back to the same original output. So there we have it our first use of a structured data type in Java. The item describes how an item should look with the name, the price, and the quantity. And then we can create occurrences of that in memory by saying new item, use a variable of type item to refer to that. And then we can refer to the name, the price, and the quantity elements within it as we need to.